and got to the point where I was so fed up with alcohol. There's no way that me, that we could continue. Do you regret becoming sober? No, not at all. I actually like being sober. Never in my life would have thought those words would come out of my mouth. Yeah, me either. Our struggles with making content, the struggles with alcohol, the struggles with sobriety, it's all real. Today, I have my husband again, and well, I forgot to ask you to ask us questions about our sobriety journey. So we're just gonna ask, answer these questions as we got them. Yeah, I think this is good because I'm going through these questions. I'm like, hey babe, this has nothing to do with sobriety except maybe some questions from James. But uh, I think it's a good opportunity for you guys to get to know us, um, the, the two behind the channel. This you know, really just family oriented. It's our kids, Megan and I, and uh, I'm kind of behind the scenes. So it's kind of- He's the one that makes the channel happen. So yeah, I'm trying to anyways. I'm gonna start with our first question from Robert. So what do you like on your pizza? It's a really random question, but I like it at the same time. Uh, everything that's meat, as you know. So I never have to worry when we go anywhere to get pizza because I, I always know what you're going to order for me. It's going to be half and half, and it's going to be your side and my side, which consists of pretty much anything that's meat. Uh, yeah, meat. That's about yeah, it. I never have to ask you what kind of pizza you want. Yeah, I just feel like vegetables. I don't even think you would know how to order a pizza for me. That's debatable. but mm, I don't know. You like everything that's green and red. And I do like pizza. pineapple on my pizza. Yeah. And so does Emma. It's disgusting. <laughs> no. How do you deal so. with the pineapple juice? I don't know. It's just different. It like ruins the consistency of the dough in the pizza. It's like mm. if they put too much sauce on the pizza and it just soaks into the, the dough, it ruins the pizza and I just have to throw it away. Yeah. I don't know. I'll eat any pizza. I just, I pick up anything that I don't like. All right. Well, thank you for the information. <laughs> question from Scott. Is this the Hallmark Channel? Mm, no, I just really wanted people to ask us questions again like normal like our other podcasts that we've had yeah i'm not sure the angle of that question if that's um like a dig a, at a us positive or negative i'm yeah. not sure i mean no. one we don't have the funding that hallmark channel has <laughs> so that's nice um we don't have the team that hallmark has so no and also we're not making and i'm not fake like well, the hallmark we're not channel. making corny christmas fake drama stories this is actually real life things that are happening in real time, which I th like a lot of your subscribers say, like real time stuff going on. And they like that I'm real. I mean, yeah. if we could all live in a fantasy Hallmark channel, that would be great. Yeah. We wouldn't have problems. I mean, sometimes Meridian, Idaho, where we're from, I mean, sometimes it feels like Hallmark channel here, but what I'm, what I'm getting at though is we're, uh, I think the things that we experience, the things that we talk about, um, our struggles with making content, the struggles with alcohol, the struggles with sobriety, it's all real. It's yeah. not scripted like a, uh, you'd find on the channel. I don't know if this is being humorous or I mean, what's going on here, but maybe it's because maybe because the picture you posted, maybe that's know. why I mean, their Christmas photo, but um, no, it's not. But this is this is real, real people. So another question from Helen, would you have been able to do sobriety if your husband was still drinking? That's a good question. So I kind of thought about this the other day. And I don't know how I can word it or without it like being mumbo jumbo. But um, I don't know the exact answer as of right now. I want to say yes, but going through it, I don't know. I've always been the one into working out and eating healthy. Like he'll eat different than me and I still choose to eat the way I want to. So I think that once I set my mind to something, I'm going to run with it. Yeah, it would have been more difficult, but I think that if I would have had my mindset to quitting drinking, he would eventually support me and not drink just like, I mean, well, you quit before me, so... Yeah, I. You've I never been a big drinker. I mean, drinker. just to bluntly ask you, I mean, would you, would you have done this if I'm still drinking? I don't know. So I mean, obviously, I mean, there's a correlation between me quit or me quitting seventy five hard and you having the mind shift. The mind shift. Um, I think. I think it's just all I, about well, mind I think shift. Our, I think our situation is a little different here. Is I think we came to a pinnacle that we understood that alcohol was kind of taking over our daily lives, our functions, our kids, and like every moment that we had had to be revolved around alcohol. And I think it's, I, I, I think it was just a time that we all came together and it was just like the decision we made. I mean, I quit before you obviously, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, and then we did 75 hard together and then you just kind of had a mind shift. Yeah, but you've that. asked me to do 75 hard several times and I said no, cause I didn't want to quit drinking. Yeah, I know, which is, it's, I mean, that's sad. That's sad how society makes it so normal that we have to have alcohol at all times to feel good, right? Yeah. So, I mean, do you, regr do, you, uh, do you regret becoming sober? No, not at all. I literally just told somebody that the other day, actually my cousin, I was like, I actually like being sober. Never in my life would have thought those words would come out of my mouth. Yeah, me either. Never <laughs> thought in a thousand years that you would 
not be drinking. It's just hard because you were never the bigger, I was the bigger drinker of the two of us. So this question is hard because right. if you, you've asked me to quit drinking several times and I said no, but it just took a group effort of all of us doing one thing together to really help that mind shift, I think. Yeah. And you make, you make a good point there that, I mean, I wasn't as often as you, but if I drank, I mean, sometimes I drank extremely heavy. Get, but I think when you did drink heavy, it turned me off to where I didn't want to drink. So I think like if you were a heavy drinker, like some people that we know, I how that I mean, if, but how would that turn you off if you were also what, extremely intoxicated? What do you mean by that? I'm curious. Like if I was drinking when heavy. you got back from Afghanistan. Yeah. Like that type of drinking. Well, I think we all have different types of trauma, I mean, different types of trauma. So, I mean, people, I mean, people watching, I mean, you, I mean, everybody has their different types of their forms of PTSD and things that you know, trigger them. I mean, a lot of people drink to escape their childhood. And a lot of people escape, escape uh, their finances and their you know life circumstances. And I think that was a big problem um, for me is coming back and the demons come back out when alcohol opens the doors to allow bad things to come back out. Yeah. And uh, it's been a big shift for me because I don't want my kids to see that. You know, the older they get, the more that stuff seems to come out from, you know, my prior deployments. And I don't want them to be part of that. I want to be able to deal with it and um, deal with it with a sober mind than be drunk and then make a stupid mistake. Yeah. I mean, I think that we just went in like seasons, like you were the heavier drinker and then I wouldn't drink as much. And it just like, was always like seasons, but then towards the end, it was me drinking the most. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a hard question to answer for our situation, but I think a lot of couples probably struggle with one side quitting and one side continuing. Mm -hmm. I think that probably causes a lot of conflict. Yeah, especially if the other spouse enables and keeps, like, pushing the other one. Like, why can't you just have one drink? Like, that is super disrespectful. Like, if I wanted to quit drinking and you're like, well, you can just have a beer now and then. Like, that's really messed up, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I go back and forth. I mean, it depends on their, their level of communication. If, if one, like, for us, I don't care if people drink in front of us. I don't care mm -hmm. if we go. It's not like I'm, you know, the Gestapo and I'm be like, you can't drink. What are you doing with beer at your house when I come to your yeah. house? Like. I don't care. It's don't not like that. You. So like maybe the this, this situation is different for some couples. Maybe some couples are just like, I choose not to. They do. That's what they want to do. But I think in the end, if they're both not on board, it could be detrimental to the relationship. Yeah. From what I've seen anyways. Well, I mean, it was a couple months before I quit drinking. Yeah. I know. And it, I mean, I was mad at you for not drinking well, that's, and being it, mad at me for drinking. It's, this guy kind of goes into it is, yeah, I mean, at first you were kind of upset. You... I, I wasn't I, upset that you quit drinking. I was just upset that I thought that you were judging me for Well, no, that's drinking. the thing. And you make comments like, oh, you think, I'm, you think you're better than me yeah. or you think you're better than them. And I'm like, that's not what it is. I just had to finally give you enough time to come around to understand what I was doing. And um, maybe I didn't explain it well enough to you, but it just, I mean. I think in this situation, like, they always, like, you know, goes back to love is patient. So, you know, having patience with your spouse if they choose to quit drinking or not and then moving forward from there and working it out. Yeah. It's true. It's a sticky situation. Yeah, I, I'm just thankful that I, I'm just thankful that I didn't have to like have the roles reversed. What do you mean? Like me wanting to quit drinking and you keep drinking. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's so much to this. I mean, I, I think it just depends on people's situations. Yeah. I just think our timing was good for us and our family. I, I mean, I've always ate the salad and you've always ate the, grosser stuff like the unhealthier stuff so it's never like i don't think food really i mean it's i don't to me i can't really equate it to like food but see, it's like, i can i can because i'm i've always been the healthier one and you've always just been like up and down about it and i've stayed pretty level with it but your eating habits have never affected like my eating habits so that's why i go back to like drinking like if i wanted to quit drinking and you would have kept drinking then yeah it might have been harder but i think i could have done it yeah i don't know i don't think so I don't know. I guess we'll no, never I, know. <laughs> I am not saying you. I'm not saying you don't have the willpower to not do it. But I'm saying the events we go to, camping, like outdoor events, and like if someone, if I am continuing to do it and having fun, and you like maybe you feel like you're missing out on something, it's tempting for you to be able. But to, when you wake up feeling like shit, and I don't. Yeah, but in the moment, like when I'm enjoying something, and you think you're enjoying something because you're buzzed, and it's really you're forgetting everything that's going on, and you're not really sure. enjoying the moment, and you can't you can't remember the the key moments. I don't know. I think it's easy. I think it's just easy to go back and forth. Yeah. Like, it's so good I don't really know if there, there's not really an answer because, I mean, there's no way of, like, going back in time. And, I mean, if you started drinking again at this point, 
I wouldn't continue. I mean, I would not start drinking yeah. again, but because I've shifted that mindset. Next question from James. With the growth of uh, my channel, how am I balancing work life, mom life, and my health as well as my YouTube channel? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just doing it. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think we're. I, I mean, I speaking for you because I do do all the back end stuff. I don't think we're so big where we can't handle it. It's not like, I mean, four thousand subscribers is good, but it's not like forty four at this point. Okay, it's not some like massive channel, but no, but it is extremely hard because I don't think people realize the time and effort that actually yeah, goes I mean, into it. We uh. So for people who don't know, um, we're both in real estate. Um, I run a real estate YouTube channel. I run a automotive channel, and I do your channel. So my life is con like just full of YouTube. That's all I do all day long. So sometimes there's conflict that arises with us. Just like I mean, last night it's like if we can't record during the day, and we're recording at night after we get home, and you know putting the kids down, and like I'm exhausted from being you know staring at four monitors all day and the cameras and editing. Uh, it causes issues because I get super tired and I can't be creative and trying to help you like frame up your shots and, you know, do the videos. So I think that's where the conflict or that's where the problem trying to balance stuff is. It just, just, it just has to be done. So I'm not sure. I'm going I mean, to. you've came into the office on Saturdays because yeah. you needed to get my I guess where I'm going out. with that is like, uh, like if you think about it, a, say a 30 minute video takes me about six to eight hours to edit minimum. So it's quite a bit of time that goes into it. And balancing that is tough. But I mean, as long as you're ready, I mean, as long as... Well, I think people just look at it as like, oh, you're just filming a video. Like, how hard can it be? Well, I used to think the same thing. And I'm like, holy crap, there's a lot more work that goes yeah. into, you know, having a successful channel. And then it just takes you over because then YouTube, the algorithm of YouTube just well, yeah, is frustrating. It, but then and in the back end, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to give, you know, you guys a quality experience. I'm trying to do audio. I'm trying to do video. I'm trying to make sure that you guys understand the point that Megan's trying to put out. And at the same time, I'm listening to what she's saying and trying to help her put that point out so you guys can understand. So there's a lot, a lot of that go, that goes on. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're we're working our way through it, and I love it. Yeah, it keeps me I'm, accountable, and I mean, I can't thank my community enough. And yeah. they're very, I mean, you guys are very supportive of you know me being a mom, and that definitely comes number one. Like I will get my kids ready for school in the morning and pick them up, and then you know everything for the most part comes before them. I mean, everything comes before them, but like, you know, I'll put them to bed and then I'll get to the comments mm -hmm. and, you know, throughout the day I try to get to comments, but, um, I've been trying to, you know, figure out a balance for that as well. And then real estate just picked up. So yeah, I mean, I, I we just, were out till eight o'clock showing houses last night. Right. And I think the best thing is though, is what I like about the growth of your channels. You have such an awesome community that I've never seen so many people that comment and, uh, engage with somebody like that. You have the channels, it's not like that. You have a really good engagement, and I love to but see... But I like engaging with my people. Right. Like, I am a personable person. I can't just let comments go unanswered. But it makes it worth it to me when people... I see these comments coming about how you've helped them, you've changed their life. Like, you're motivating them. You're keeping them accountable. Like I get text messages. I get emails. I get it's, other social media yeah. platforms, like, messages. I mean, gosh, it's it's super ins I mean, inspiring hearing other people, like, quitting drinking because I helped them. Because of, I don't know, because of our work, I, I mean, guess. you're helping people across the world. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, your daughter can look up to you and, you know, that you're changing people's lives through YouTube, which is insane to even think about that. We're at this point that we can do that. So that's yeah. great. And like when it comes to health, I think, um, like I try to get up in the morning before everybody and then definitely knocking out comments and content as I'm walking on the treadmill. And then, you know, those days that it's not just walking on the treadmill, then I, you know, get to it after. But I mean, I'm trying to make sure that if I'm not, I don't want to stay up too late. I, I aim for seven hours of sleep. So if I'm, I don't know, some mornings I'll just do a quick walk. And then some mornings I will do a full hour workout of walking, running and strength training. But I mean, if I can't, if I can't, I've been learning not to let it eat at my brain all day long. Yeah. And I think I got to be, this. I think I got to be a little better too. Um, not staying up till two thirty in the morning. Well, it's hard. I mean, when I'm, I think my problem is just being on computers all day and having technology. I don't have like, there's no release of like, there's no, there's uh, how do I say that? I don't come down from like a high of being on computers all day. Like my mind's con you know constantly active, and I got to be a little better about uh, when I come. We, we start doing your videos and taking care of your channel, as I have to take all the other channels away because I start mixing all the. It's it's. I don't know where I'm going with this. 
it's hard for yeah, I mix all the content together, so it becomes extremely overwhelming for me. That's well, and all three platforms are completely different than each yeah, other. Definitely. I mean, I guess if yeah, no, they're literally all completely different. Yeah, and except really, Josh's Josh or the real estate channel and mine are pretty similar. Like a lot of like. No, I don't think no. So you're no. for the people who understand YouTube, um, like our real estate channel. That's more like reactionary, so it gets a huge spike of views and then it dies off because it's it's like current events. What's going on with our market updates and things going like that. Your channel is more evergreen where people, they come in and they watch over time and you continue to get views and you continue to bring new people in and people have discussions and then they engage. I mean, you're having full on conversations in your, in your comment section and you're not even there. I mean, that's, it's pretty awesome to see. Yeah. And automotive, that's just evergreen as well. That's when people are searching for cars and stuff, but I don't know. It takes a lot. It is yeah. a lot more work than I think yeah. I ever imagined. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of you to make it happen. And like I say, and be, being real with you guys, I mean, there's conflict that arises between us. Like sometimes I'm just not into it. I can't stand even look at a camera sometimes or like <laughs> Premiere or Adobe well, Premiere. Well, it's hard it's like, because yeah. like we have the option to record at night when the kids go to bed versus, you know, the other two channels, you don't have that option. So sometimes at the end of the day when we said that we were going to record and then we don't end up recording and then it's like, well, that's your fault. No, that's your fault. And I mean, it's just like, goes well, it's, back and it's forth. stupid. It's stupid conflict. And I just got to be better about understanding that you're not dealing with the other things I'm dealing with and you're dealing with your channel. So stuff I'm working on. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's just still, figuring, think, still figuring it out like a good balance, I guess. Yeah. But in the end, I'm just excited for growth. I, I love your community. I love everybody that comments, everybody that watches. I mean, you get some, I mean, everybody's gonna have haters and, you know, dumbasses that comment and, a lot of and my, stupid like, stuff, but ones that have been with me from the very beginning, like know that there's a team and they ask about you and, you know, they bring you into the conversation. I mean, I can know like a few of them off the top of my head, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's the nice thing is people are very aware that this is a family, a family channel. Right. Yeah. Okay. So a next question is, have any of the guests you've had on your YouTube channel had a story that has inspired you on your journey? I'm going to say everybody has inspired me and I've reached out to these people because they've inspired me. I didn't know Tasha's story until I got her on here. So that was really inspiring going through that with her. And, you know, it's like, wow, like it actually can be done. She was rock bottom withdrawals, you know, just one day, just like my, my mindset shifted, just one day it clicked and she was done drinking. And that is super inspiring to me because it's real. I try to explain to people that it was just one day that my mind just shifted and I didn't want to drink anymore. Just kind of like her, like that was super inspiring. And then, you know, fill with fasting and right. just, I mean, Josh coming from like a really, you know, yeah, that's a crazy troubled too. child. I mean, like not troubled, but you know, he had a lot of issues growing up. And, um, I mean, I've can tried reaching out to more and more people to get on my channel and it's very, I mean, like a lot of people that inspire me and I'm like, God, I want you on my channel. And like, they're like on camera. Hell no. Well, I think that's, <laughs> it's kind of inspiring that people even have the, I wouldn't say, I mean, people have the guts to even come on. It's very hard. I mean, as you can tell, I mean, just like your Tasha, like she, this was, I mean, I could tell it was very emotional and hard for her, but yeah. it helps so many people. And, um, and that's why I try to tell people, I'm like, your story doesn't matter how big or how small your story can literally change somebody's life. Yeah. Well, just like uh, last night, I mean, we're talking about guests coming on, but I mean, we haven't had a ton on here, but it's, uh, even talking to people and it's amazing when you find out, yeah, I stopped like last night, I stopped drinking two years ago. Oh you know, yeah. A couple we met with, uh. And they're like, wow. And it just, it breaks off the whole story and they have their, their story, their journey, what their, why, why they did this, why, you know, their Which motivations. Which is very all similar to a lot of these other stories, but it's, you know, their perspective on alcohol, you know, it's just, it's amazing. The more you open up about it, you start getting other people's stories and you're like, oh, like, and then he told me, he's like, well, this person that he referred me to is now, he was an AA right. also, and he's seven or so many years sober and I'm like, geez, I, I think what's inspiring to me is the people that you bring on. And then I hear the inspiring stories in the comments and people texting you, call, you know, and messaging you and telling you how inspiring, how you inspired to help them. And that are inspiring. It's just like a chain reaction. Yeah. And that's pretty awesome. I mean, there's you, some you, people on here that have considered starting their own YouTube channels with their journey and, or they've influenced, I have influenced them to quit drinking and then they've influenced their friends to quit drinking. Right. It's just like this one big chain of amazing stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So, I guess all of my guests have inspired me and I reach out to a lot of people that keep inspiring me that I want to get on my channel, but here's a, here's a something I, this kind of came up as I was thinking about this. I would like to see somebody come on with an opposing viewpoint. 
we bring a lot of stories on, you know, inspiring stories, you know, motivating, but I would also like to see somebody come on that has a different viewpoint than, than we share to see if we can. Like, why do you have to, is it all, why is it all or nothing? Why can't you occasionally drink? Right. And And I'm curious if we can bridge that gap to make something that's creative and inspiring to people, even though we may not agree. Cause I think that makes the best conversation is when people don't agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, for me, for my personality, I know that I can never drink again, but you know, for Tasha's husband, he, he had a term for it and you know, he can literally have one cider all weekend long and never finish it. Like, I mean, I can, I can understand people's reasoning of like, you know, why can't you just social drink? Well, some of us cannot social drink. So yeah, I would love to see that's the thing is I can't understand it because, um, what it's the Trump, what it's created in my life is I don't understand why I would even need one drink. Yeah. There's no benefit to me at all, but that's why I want somebody else to come on and engage with them. Well, here's why it's beneficial. Here's, you know, why you should be, it's like, yeah. even though I don't agree with that, I want to hear their story. And I think that'd be really cool and see if we can make something. Or I love people that are like, well, I haven't been drinking, but you know, for this long a time, but I didn't, it's not going to be a forever thing. We still might drink, you know, at events and stuff. And it's like, if you've already gone this long, why even go back down that road? Right. I don't know. But yeah, I would love to get an opposing view. Be good. Another question from Trevor. Was there ever a point that you felt like solving everything was impossible? And then what did you do to start on the solution path? Yeah. So my point of view, I mean, obviously the husband, the man. Um, yes, I did think that everything was impossible. It got to the point where I was so fed up with alcohol and what it was creating in our lives and the conflict and the chaos. There was times where I thought there's no way that me, that we could continue. And it was strictly because of alcohol. Are we perfect? No. Do we still have, to, <laughs> do we still have conflict? Of course. But the difference is that alcohol is not creating that different door to walk through and, you know, of complete destruction. Because I feel like alcohol allows you to take a path of least resistance, but it's the most resistance once you open up the door. It causes extreme issues. And yes, I've been to the point, I mean, just, um, I think what happens is just you have good times, bad times, good times, bad times, but those bad times, they, they get so amplified and they start growing and they grow, grow, grow. And then when an event happens, it just explodes Yeah. and all those come back. And, you know, we always say, you know, stop living in the past, but all those past experiences from alcohol come back and they flood and make you extremely angry. And, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, there was points that I thought it was impossible yeah. for me and you. No, oh, I agree. Because of alcohol. Yeah. But what did you do to start the solution path? Well, I think what we started to do is re- realize, hey, there's a problem here. And if we don't fix this problem and we don't get rid of what's going on with alcohol, our family will be destroyed. Our kids' lives will be destroyed. Our home life will be destroyed. Our dog's life will be destroyed. Everything we know will be destroyed because of a stupid Because we couldn't, yeah, because we couldn't put down the bottle. Yeah. And a lot of people, I understand, will watch this and they'll be like, well, you know, that was your choice and you could have controlled your <laughs> emotions and stuff. Yeah, but no shit. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, though, is uh, it... We all, alcohol shifts your mentality and allows you to go places you normally wouldn't go. It lowers your inhibitions and it makes you more opt to cause issues and cause chaos, which um, that's an issue, especially with, you know, your background and then, you know, my background with the military and stuff, the bad things come out. Yeah. And uh, it's either we put that fire out or the fire consumes us. I mean, I guess the number one uh, path that we took was start doing 75 hard together. Yeah. So I guess in turn, that you could was say the that solution. We, we came together and uh, I'm glad, you know, my buddy, Josh, he, everybody fought me on it forever. And if I actually gave up, I was like, I'm just never going to do this. And then Josh came up, he's like, why don't we do this all together? And I'm like, this is great. <laughs> so I think the motivation was having like-minded people, people that were more positive, people that, you know, don't engage in drinking and you kind of just, it just opens that door and then you start a habit yeah. and then it's like, oh, I really don't need this. This is stupid. You know, the biggest thing I had, like we were talking about is why would I need to drink 12 seltzers as I'm mowing the lawn. <laughs> like that's retarded. Yeah. I mean, it's a good, it was a good time. I thought you know, I had my headphones in mowing the lawn, but I'm not spending time with my kids. I'm not spending time with you. I'm not enjoying anything. I'm just listening to the, you know, the negativity the news, you know, wars going on, how bad the economy is in my head and I'm drinking. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. It's a revolving door and it causes just is depression. Yeah. So, so I, guess I, like- I choose not to do that. Like for years, a lot of it did seem impossible, but now with eliminating alcohol, it like there's more, like it seems less impossible. Uh, Yeah. I, there's always going to be problems that arise. I mean, there's, life is full of problems. 
I mean, I don't care who you talk to, everything, you know, life is hard, yeah. but not having a substance that's um, changing your mentality, then yeah, I mean, it's much easier. Yeah, no, I agree. It's not affecting me as much. And you know what else is good is uh, not a sponsor for them, but. <laughs> we used to drink the hard ones, though. <laughs> Seltzer water <laughs> has been a good solution to the path, too, because, I mean, I can take down, I mean, I can take down like 12 seltzer waters like in an yeah. hour, which I don't feel bad about, but maybe I shouldn't have that much carbon, but carbonation, but kind of funny. Okay. Another question. Um, how long have you been married and how do you keep the fire stoked through a relationships inedible ebbs and flows? Um, well, April will be 10 years. Is that how long it'll be? <laughs> We've been together. <laughs> it'll be 14. You know, well, I got to stop. You, you know, the worst thing to always ask a man is what is the birth dates of your children? And what's your anniversary? I see, I'm even, the one that gets our anniversary yeah, wrong. See, every time I know it, for some reason, somebody asks me that, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, know. I don't know why it's always an issue. So 10 years in April, and usually we combine my birthday and our anniversary always together. So, um, which he locks out because he's always like, well, for your birthday, I took you here. No, 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 no. For our anniversary, you took me here. <laughs> um, I don't know how, I think keeping the fire stoked is we just don't have a possessive, like a needy personality Towards yeah, each we other. were kind of talking about this before, and um, I like the point you bring up. If you can go in more detail about that, I just, I think being needy and possessive of each other just causes way more conflict. Like, I mean, you do your thing and I do my thing. I mean, and then at the end of the day, you know, we're home together. Like, you're working, and I don't bug you when you're working. I don't demand. Well, I mean, that's debatable. Okay, well, I don't demand you know things from you all day long, every day, and vice versa. And I think just there's like a 50, 50 part of our marriage that, you know, I do this and you do that. And it's just nothing super expected of the other one. I mean, you always come home to a clean house and then also, you know, when I'm overwhelmed, you help me, you know, clean up if I got extremely overwhelmed. Yeah, no, I think we just kind of operate on you do you, you do, and I do what I need to do. And then we make, we just make it happen for our family and us. I think, um, I mean, there's points where we get a little carried away and we don't spend enough time with each other. But we also, we I mean, are pretty lucky that our kids are pretty amazing that um, people do like to babysit them. And then yeah. their grandma and grandpa love to take them on the weekends yeah, I some, also. I got so. some pretty awesome parents that, you know, yeah. love their, well, I mean, you're. I'm just saying their grand, they're, they're grandparents. They're one set of grandma and grandpa are here and they're usually with them every weekend. So then, you know, we can go to a movie, go to dinner. Yeah. Do I, I just you think know. me and you need to focus a little more on each other and not some, I think we get so into what we're doing. We don't actually get into each other. Well, I think that can yeah. really affect things. When we, we just, we're like, we're gonna have no screen time. And then we sit down and then we're both on our phones. Like I'm like, half an hour goes by and it's like, we're tired. It's like, this was, that was stupid. We don't have time. But or you're asleep on the couch and I finally am watching a show that I want to watch or you're watching a show and I'm asleep. Yeah. Like I'm saying, we're not perfect. I mean, this is, I think things that everybody deals with in relationships, yeah. but we do go through ups and downs. And I, uh, but um, I think the biggest thing is we're not like possessive and needy of each other. Yeah. And, and I, I like how you bring up like you, I'm not saying you have set duties you have to do as a woman. I'm just saying you do, you're doing the wife thing, you're doing the mom thing, and you're you're great at it. I can't do what you can do, and you can't do what I can do. I mean, we could both try, but in the end, I mean, I can't handle what you can handle, and you probably can't do what I'm doing. But that's I think what makes makes us a good, um, a team? good yeah, a good team. And that's yeah. what we got to do. Yeah, just I mean, you pay the bills. <laughs> Well, no, I, it's not just that. You support me and I support you. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. We support each other. I guess I just grew up, like, my grandparents really influenced me. And, you know, my grandpa was out 5 o'clock in the morning working all day long. Grandma always was, you know, breakfast was done, laundry was done, dinner, you know, dinner was always done, the house was always clean. And to me, that just set, you know, my grandpa's day up good. And he came home to, you know, a nice house. He had dinner. I mean, it just... I guess your role models growing up really sometimes, you know, affect, or I mean, in a good way, affect like how you, you know, end up treating your household. Well, that's something I respect of you. And it's also not something I ever expected. And I think that line gets crossed sometimes with, with you know, with relationships like the man it thinks that's expected and they force it upon women. And uh, it becomes, that's, I think, where it becomes a conflict. Like, but I, I guess in a lot of our like circles, like the man is the head of the household. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like we're very traditional and a lot of our friends are very traditional. Mm -hmm. Let the man go work and, you know, be able to provide a house for you. And like, I don't understand why the women can't keep the houses. It's, well, it's not just that. It's like if, uh, but that's if the man is actually working. If the man is just 
doesn't want to work. It, well, if he's just out wasting time, being lazy, not actually producing, helping his family, then I could see where there could be conflict with women. We're like, well, what are you doing all day? Yeah. Like, you're not helping us. I'm having to do all this. I'm having to pay the bills. I have to work. I have to clean house. I have to get that, you know, on and on. If a man is not being a man, then um, th that could be some serious issues. But vice versa, if the woman's doing the same thing, that's why it's... Well, it's just like if the woman was the head of the household um, and she's out and about and the husband's home, like, I mean, th the roles are reversed. Like, the woman shouldn't have to go to work all day long, come home, cook, clean, you know, do every single thing. But, I mean, I was just talking to uh, another mom about this. She's a stay-at-home mom. And she's like, I do the yard work. I do all the housework. My kids come home to a clean house. Dinner's always done. My husband doesn't have to worry about anything. That way he can just focus on work and then coming home and being with us. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a really. Does it always work out that way? Absolutely not. No. There's always, there's, no. and that's what I'm trying to get. It's like there's always going to be conflict somewhere. But yeah. I think, like you said, the team environment has got to be there. And we've got to, even though we may not agree with everything that we're doing, there's an overall understanding that this is working for us and our family. I mean, and there's been conversations where I'm like, I want to be that at the household. You stay home and clean all day long. Like, but, go for it. Have I mean, fun. <laughs> so like, I think all of our jobs, I mean, as a stay at home mom and, um, well, that's my main job, stay at home mom and wife, then like you respect that, you know, my job and then I respect your job. I think it's just. Well, I like how you bring up, uh, you brought up originally that you're not being, what'd you say? Pick, not picky. Um, needy and possessive. Yeah. Needy and possessive. I mean, I'm not, even though I have access to all your stuff because I'm, you know, doing YouTube, social media, I'm not in there looking at who you're talking to and what's going on. I have no reason to believe that that's happening. If you're giving me the reason to believe that, then I'd probably question you about it. But like, that's not a priority of mine to get to the office every morning, log in and see what's what you're doing. Or like, <laughs> you, you sometimes you make to? the comments like, oh, no, nah, because we have the the GM app. You're like, you're tracking me. I'm like, it's it's a funny joke, but like, I'm not. Like, it doesn't matter to me. You know, um, I've never had to be in that situation where I feel like I've had to. And you've made we that don't apparent. have combined social media accounts because I mean, well, you've respected the fact that you. I respect the fact you haven't put me in that position where I feel like I have had to, you know, be investigative behind your back. Yeah, well, I just think that's kind of and like if you high wanna, school, if, anyways. Yeah, and if you want to, if you want to go start doing that, then have fun. I'll see you later. No. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my but. gosh, no, I think yeah, it just comes with you know. There's a fine line of like not being jealous of each oh, other. It's respect for each other. Yeah, and it's love. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, I mean, I bring you lunch. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah, it's just like, and the, the days that I can't bring you lunch, I'm like, well, crap, well, he's going to starve all day. Cause yeah, but see, but also it goes back to, I don't expect that. I love, I even know, I mean, I love it. I, sometimes I'm like, it's just great when you bring me stuff and I'm like, this is awesome. Cause I'll sit here and starve to death. I'll drink 25 coffees and I'll feel like I'm stroking out on the floor and, I'm, and you'll come in with a sandwich and be like, oh, my days, I'm good to go now, but I don't know. I just think I just think it's like an equal like there has to be equal parts and if it's one e is if one is jealous of the other, like because they get to be out out of the house working. I mean just like your parents, like your mom has done daycare for thirty five years and your dad has always been a truck driver of some mm -hmm. sort of some sort. So, you know, she's never jealous of your dad. Like he gets to leave the house. I mean, she's stuck at home all day long because that's her job. And, you know, they she, she still, you know, cleans, cooks, gets dinner on the table. And I mean, just like one of my other friends, she's trying to, you know, do get a job or get a business going. And but she still realizes that I am, you know, still a house or stay at home mom. Like my husband's going to come home to a clean house dinner and he doesn't have to worry about other things because he has, you know, his responsibilities. Yeah. I mean, it's just like I think and it's something to be said. We're not. A, I mean. I'm speaking for myself. We're just very traditional. Yes, like, but I'm not again. I mean, other people, everybody's lives are different. Yeah. Every situation is different. And I'm not sitting here to say that that's everybody, how everybody we should be living. We are not perfect by no means. No. But I mean, that, that's, fun of us. that's what works for us. Yeah. But everybody's situation is different. And uh, I don't, I'm to the point now, I don't really care about other people's personal business. I mean, it just is what it is. They choose to do what they want to do. We do what we want to do. When people and, question like, well, well, now that your kids are in school full time, like what are you going to do for work? I mean, I still have a job at home. I mean, also I have a real estate license, but like my job is at home. My husband's not going to take the day off because there's a snow day. Like that's my, it's like my responsibility. Well, it's a like. We're self-employed too. So yeah, if, we don't, if we're not producing, then we don't have income. Yeah. And I think people forget that. Like you can just take a day off. No, 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 no. You can't take a day off when you're self-employed because nobody else is going to do it for you. I think everybody in our life, like that helps keep everything going. I mean, like your mom is tremendous help when it comes to the kids. Um, and you know, Josh and your business stuff. Like, I think there's just like, 
the certain people in our life that help make our life, um, I don't want to say smoother, but like just make it work, I guess. Because without certain people in our life, I don't think it would be, I think there would be a lot more issues. And there, the fire would be definitely not a fire. Mm-hmm. There'd be fire in other places. Yeah, 100%. I know that we live in a world that, you know, makes fun of traditional couples, but I think that's just how we get through. I don't think so. I, I, I think there is many people who live they're very, very family oriented. I think uh, mainstream media and society is trying to push away from the nuclear family, and you know, that's but that's what I believe, and I believe mother figure, uh, father figure is good for the kids and their development as long as it's healthy. I mean, obviously, there's some single moms that are probably a mom and a dad that are, can, yeah. are better than the father in their life. I mean, that's why I'm saying every situation is different. I mean, I, mean, but, I know a friend back home that I mean, she. But was the, the mom overall back. arching theme of everything is, I believe, uh, mother, father, healthy family. Yeah. If everybody's healthy together, but there are some situations where it's toxic. Yeah, very, and that's very sad for the kids, honestly. Yeah, and the dogs. And the dogs you can't split the dogs. Yeah. I mean, who's gonna split the dogs? I get both of the dogs. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, all right, so another you have the trailer. I'll take the dogs. So, <laughs> okay, anyways, um, somebody. All right. Another question was, I was talking to one of my subscribers and told them about uh, one of our recent events that we went to and how there was alcohol there. And it was our first like outer circle event with alcohol because, I mean, all of our like inner circle type people know that we have quit drinking. And I mean, they just don't drink because we Mm -hmm. don't drink. I don't know. But we went to our first um, first event and. Uh, this question is, um, how did you navigate the evening? And do you think that you inspired anyone in attendance to consider quitting drinking? Well, I know one of the moms has watched my videos and I think she still watch, like continues watching them. And she's, she's very um, uplifting about us quitting drinking. And she just shared with me a, a horrible story of um, a family friend or something like that. And she's like, you know, alcohol is awful, like drinking and driving. And if we drink now, we just stay home. But I mean, I think how we navigated the evening is we just politely declined to like, you oh, know, I'm fine. And then you had coffee. I brought coffee. Yeah, I I, mean, I don't. I'm not there to beat my drum to tell people <clears throat> you can't drink. Like it's I don't care. Yeah. Like like I said, I'm very um, pro freedom. It's your decision on what you want to do. Like I'm not there. Like they're like, do you want to do you want a beer? I'm like, no, I'm good. I appreciate it though. Like that's it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be awkward, a weird situation. Like ooh. I mean yeah. if. It's their well, I house. I feel like some it's people probably think like they can't ask us to hang out because we don't drink and they don't want to offend us. But it's like there's no offense taken. I don't give a rat's ass what you do. Like you can drink and it's not going to bother me. It's not going to make me want to drink. I mean, you do you and I'll do me. Like I just think it comes down to that. Like like I felt awkward that they might have felt awkward. Like that we felt awkward. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> like, I, I don't. Just, I do not. Aunt, like I just don't care. Yeah. Like we go out. I mean, we like went to the concerts. Like I just don't care. I honestly. I get more joy out of lime and seltzer or lime and um, club soda. Sorry, I get more joy out of lime and soda water than I do drinking a beer now. I don't know why I can drink nineteen soda waters. It's just insane. I'm like addicted to them. But I think um, like people respect like until they you know cross that line of being really pushy about like you're dumb for not drinking, then we'll have issues. But I mean, but we don't have those kind of friend groups. I don't, and I'm not around those people anyways. I don't care if they want to treat me that way. Then they don't need to be in my life. I mean. I'll put them in their place where I just leave. I, I don't really care. Yeah. Like the whole, like, you know, you want this? No, <laughs> you're rude. Yeah. People know. I mean, they just, they know. And they're just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. I just, I think. Hey, the point, <clears throat> I guess the problem I have though is <clears throat> when I'm at other people's houses, I don't care because I can leave. The problem I have though is if they come to my environment and some people will still continue drinking, but if they get to the point where it's starting to annoy me or my family or my kids or putting us in different situations, I, that's where I get extremely um, upset and then I'll have to deal with the situation. Yeah. Like, it's just not I mean, fun for me. That's what I'm avoiding. I don't like, like, yeah, I would rather go out now to other I, people's houses yeah, because I, I don't want to deal with it. I'm not about chaos house. anymore. Like yeah. I don't like uncontrolled chaos, especially with drunk people. I don't like dealing with people, you know, pass out on my lawn. I don't like doing people breaking my stuff. I don't like people like talking to my kids in a certain tone because they're drunk. Like it's, uh, it puts me in a very awkward position, especially if they're like being inappropriate around our children, Yeah, especially if they're family or friends. I mean, it's a very, uh, Awkward situation, which I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But comes well, first. I don't want to, I, I, and it's my house. Like, I don't, I can say I don't want it in my house. Yeah. What comes first is you, the kids, and the dogs. 
<laughs> the dogs. Yeah, they're always included. It's always the dogs. Well, that's the thing too. Like I have extreme problem with people who get um, drunk and then like maybe they're not trying to abuse animals, but they're very abusive to them. Like they're very rough or they're like, I don't like that. I mean, I can't, I mean, yeah. my experiences in the past, especially the military overseas and stuff, like, you know, people abusing animals, you know, children, women. Um, I have a very, very, very short tolerance for abuse towards innocent things. Yeah. And to me, that's why I'm always talking about dogs, but to me, they're, they're very innocent. Kids and animals are very innocent to me and uh, they can't protect themselves like, like uh, men can, so. Yeah, well, I mean, and I think, I mean, like, like when my dad came over the summer when we were doing 75 hard, I mean, he didn't drink any hard alcohol at my house and he was very respectful of just having a few beers and it was totally fine. But it's, you know, those situations where the hard alcohol starts getting brought over and people start getting like sloppy and annoying and mm-hmm. you just, you don't want to deal with it anymore because like, you're not on their level anymore. Yeah. I just don't have patience for any of that anymore. Like I will gladly have people over, but I will not be what we used to be. We're providing just gallons of alcohol and <laughs> It's like, it's so stupid. Yeah. Like I look back and I'm like, I can't even remember most of those events. And then what I do remember is I'm just pissed off at you or the people to be honest. Like then, that's, I have to wake, then I have to wake up hungover and clean up everything, yeah, which I'm is super it. miserable. Yeah. After I spent like 200 bucks on alcohol to get everybody else drunk. Yeah. And camping's different too. I know that's a weird thing you bring up sometimes in your video, but I mean, this last summer we didn't have any drinks. No. Camping at all. Yeah. That's not normal. We'd be 12. And a lot of people are like, how can you go camping without drinking? Well, the amount well, how, of stupid like now stuff. How can, now like, how can I drink while camping? Like, just, I don't well, want to. Looking to. back, the amount of stupid things like drinking, riding bikes, razors, like the amount of things you could have put people in danger and your kids, like so stupid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just mm-hmm. stupid. White claws, no loss. Yeah, well, especially with like, I mean, yeah, everybody preaches safety and like firearm safety and like, not drinking and but driving. But you see all these but, wasted but, but, people but out there the shooting and but driving. That's the thing. You go out to the mountains and all of a sudden there's no rules apply. And that's where a lot of people get injured. And it's stupid because that good memory turns into a really bad memory really fast. What are you thankful for every morning when you wake up and embrace the new day? What gives you that joy of life? I'll let, I'll let you answer first. Um, I think waking up to healthy children. Like, I mean, I feel very, like, thankful for that. Honestly, mm-hmm. because I mean, one of my best friends lost her baby at 10 months. And so it's like, I think knowing that my children are, you know, safe and they're, you know, waking up in the morning and breathing and healthy and I don't have any issues yeah. with them. I mean, I don't think there's nothing more that I can be thankful for than having healthy children. I mean, in this time, like with this question in mind, I mean, I'm thankful for a lot. Okay, well, tell us. Like, you know, I have a house over, I, you let me sleep with a ceiling fan on. What? <laughs> like, I get to run, I get to run, I get to run the heat in my house at night and still have the ceiling fan on. I hate this Like, <laughs> I have a clean bed. Like, you know, I have, I'm very thankful when I wake up to my dog next to me, which is so weird. But like, you know, if Dixie is not next to me, I'm like, she didn't sleep with me last night. Like. You know, like it's just the little things like that bring me joy and like that I'm thankful for. Yeah, no, that's that's good. And I can tell there's a lot of emotion there and I'd have to agree with you. I mean, everybody has their different situations, but uh, I mean, I'm I thinking I still wake up like panicking that my children are not going to wake up. So like I am very thankful every morning when as soon as I hear them, like I don't that's a whole different like video on its own. Yeah. But yeah, there's nothing like waking up and having I mean. It's chaotic we, we have, But we have a boy and a girl, but especially your girl when she looks at you and gives you a hug. Yeah. Like there's something to a dad that's really special when the daughter's like that. I'm just thankful that they're still they're still innocent right now. They're still... Uh, they're always they're still, be they're still, well, well, I mean, they're still kids. They're not worried about everything that's going on. They're not worried about life and wars and the economy and all that. And honestly, I'm just thankful that we can... To wake up and be able to breathe. I mean, there's so much... There's so much sadness in the, the world right now. I mean, we're very yeah. lucky and fortunate to be able to just to wake up. I mean, Without, there's so many, like bombs going well, off. Well, there's so many people that are and, suffering right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really, that's like hard question. I mean, I mean, you're thankful, you know, for the most common things, but like, then it really starts getting deeper and deeper what we're actually thankful for. Yeah. No, it's, I, and I love how James always writes you paragraphs and like, he's very engaging and it's a very thoughtful question and it's not something you could just, I think anybody can just answer right away because 
uh, we should all be thankful just to be alive. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Like- it's amazing to be alive, but everybody has their different scenarios and situations. And um, I'm just thankful to be here, to yeah. be able to do this, to be with you, to you know, live my life. Uh, I'm thankful to be where we're at. I'm thankful to be in Idaho and you know, in America. And just, but there's as much as you're thankful and joyful thing. There's so many th- sadness and so much wrong in the world. Like it overshadows a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, like right when I read that, I was like, oh, wow, like there's a lot yeah. to be thankful for and a but, lot but of things I, but that I, can bring you joy. But I, what I do like is I think we do have to reflect on what we do have and we have to be thankful for what we do have in our lives and not always, not always want, we should always, we should always exceed to want, you know, to be better in life, but we should always <laughs> take account of what we have and to, which is hard. Yeah. And to reflect on that because if we don't, we get lost of what I want, what I want to do, what I want to do next week, what I want to do next year. But we really, we, yeah. have, we really have to focus on right now because that's mm-hmm. all we have. And we don't have yesterday. We don't have tomorrow. We have right now. And I think it's very important that um, we be, th- you know, that's something like to, I'm, I'm very thankful for right now because that's yeah. all I have. That's a good one. I cannot see tomorrow or the past. I just can't. I'm thankful for right now. Yeah. I'm very thankful for sitting in a building. I'm thankful for <laughs> being able to do this with you, to be married, to have my kids. But like, in 10 minutes from now, my life will be drastically different than it is right now. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I'm just thankful. I just need, I th- what I'm getting here as I'm rambling, but I'm saying, I think this question is really thought provoking because it's such an easy question, but it's so hard yeah. to digest. And I think my answer to it is I'm thankful that I can reflect on this question right now and reflect on what I am joyful in life because I don't think we do that enough. I mean, I guess every day, like I get my kids and I'm like, gosh, I'm so thankful. Like, that they are such good, kind children. I mean, honestly, like I, like they are the, they are the joy of my life. And I am, I mean, what obviously, what? What about the dogs? <laughs> you leaving Dixie out? What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, obviously. Yeah. Um, no, but like, you know, I get my kids and as soon as I hear that, you know, one of them did something bad in school, I like correct it. And I'm like, dude, I am not like, I'm thankful that my kids like have that respect for like me and adults, other adults. And, you know, I just like, they're great. I mean, they're great kids. Like, so waking up to them every morning as chaotic as it gets sometimes, like they are the joy of my life. Yeah. I have one more thing to add on that is I think, uh, I was kind of going into a little bit. I think, I don't know. This is really thought, but this is insane. How why this is so hard to answer, but I think, uh, society has ruined this for so many people. I don't, I don't think society has ruined it for so many people that they can't be thankful for anything, that they always have to be constantly sad, depressed. And like, Comparing themselves. Exactly. And I don't, it's always looked down upon that if you're joyful or you're, you know, you're thankful or, you know, that I always feel like people ask this question, people are like, there's so much, you know, problems in the world. Like I can't be thankful for anything. But I, what I'm trying to say is I think I'm going to go back to, I think people doesn't reflect on with themselves or with, you know, with each other on what they're thankful for. Cause if they don't, I think it just gets lost. Yeah. no, oh, I agree. I mean, and it, it kind of goes to that like whole self love thing. Like people want you to give yourself, like they want you to love yourself, love yourself for you love everybody else. But then if you love yourself, then you're looked at like you're conceited and you don't care about anybody else, but then you need to love yourself. Like where, like, you know, it goes to that, like nobody can ever be thankful Nobody can ever just like, because like social, like, you know, you're comparing all the time. You're, it's just like I just a constant don't, I don't, battle I don't, Sometimes I have a weird thought. I don't, I don't the love yourself thing. Like I have a weird theory on that. I love what I have been given and I love the situation. Even though the situation might be not always be good, I love the situation I've been placed in. Obviously by the grace of God, I have been placed in a certain situation for some reason. I'm here. I love that. Yeah. I, I think sometimes when people, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I'm saying you're wrong. I'm saying love thyself is just, I, to me, that is, it creates, cre- it creates a lot of bad internal conflict. Yeah. No, this I mean, is my opinion. I mean, I, people take that a different way. You can love your, of course you can love yourself and you, you should just, love yourself. You think you can respect yourself. yourself you yeah. Know, but like, you should also love the people around you. You should also love the experience that you're having now as a human, yeah. because if you don't, it's, it's gone. Like love the people that bring you joy in life. I just I love this question, James, and I read your stuff all the time. Um, but thank you for that question because I think that's very thought provoking for a lot of people. And it's, it seems <laughs> I mean, we simple, could have had a whole not, podcast on this. It's not so simple. So, yeah. 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 So I'm thankful for the comment. Thank you. <laughs> yes, there we go. 
a lot happened during this podcast. I mean, we tried keeping it to sobriety, but it just opened up a whole different door to a lot of other things. But I mean, we love having these conversations. I, I mean, if it's not you in front of me, it's somebody else in front of me and it just helps engage people and get people going and, you know, other thought processes and, you know, it just brings the community closer together, which I think, you know, it leads into that is what is inspiring to keep this channel going is I just love the communication that I get, you know, to have one-on-one -on -one with people and uh, across the world. Yeah, I like this. I don't think, I think this is nice because we don't do a lot of these one-on-ones with me and you. I mean, this is our second one, but I'm realizing right now that this is a time for us to communicate, which we really don't have a lot of time to do. Or we don't make time to do, but it's good. But um, no, I mean, this kind of has a little bit to do with sobriety and alcohol, but I think it's just you guys get to know us and what's going on. And uh, we love the engagement. I mean, you guys can comment, like, or dislike. I mean, whatever. whatever. Ask us more questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Ask my next guest more questions. I mean. Yeah, definitely. That will be announced soon. Cool. Well, I appreciate you guys, and thanks for having us on. Okay.